Again, good morning and good afternoon. Uh, today we're actually going to be uh, covering a, a, a really great topic on how you can utilize already pre-built attributes. And these attributes are actually uh, automatic when you uh, they can be accessed from when you're gathering information from, let's say, uh, a multi-select or single select or even a text response. And then you can actually use those attributes through, you know, over and over again within the chat conversation and actually creates a memory of what was entered. And so let's say, you know, down the conversation, if somebody asks another question, they can actually bring it in and uh, you can actually reaccess that attribute because it's actually within the system memory and uh, available to be used at any time. And it actually really helps with the conversational tone. It actually makes your chatbot seem uh, more human because it does have that memory and it can recall what was discussed before, which we find to be really, really uh, useful within that process. And again, we'll show you this all through no code. It's actually about only about three or four steps to utilize an attribute. And I'll walk through those uh, today. And first off, I'm just going to kind of uh, give you some screens on how we're going to do this. And then I'll show you the end result. And then I'll actually show you real time uh, within the, uh, the Juji environment, how you utilize the attributes. So, you know, sort of like uh, teach you, show you, and uh, show you again. So we'll go from there. So First off, uh, for today's webinar, we're specifically going to use, uh, you know, if, if you use the multi-turn function, we've discussed how to use that uh, on uh, previous uh, webinars. We'll, we will do another review as we're using it just to show you how to access this. Uh, and the multi-turn actually allows us to gather information. We're gonna be using a single select, uh, multi-select single, uh, value uh, selection as uh, as our example of this. And then from there, we're also going to show you how to use the precondition. And the precondition is actually where we can access the attribute from the uh, memory store and then put conditions like equal to, not equal to, uh, you'll see some other uh, variations in there as well. And we also can ensure that when we access the attribute that there has actually been an answer given. So that uh, attribute has value. And we'll do that like right from the, the beginning because we wanna make sure if you're, if you're accessing the attribute and doesn't have a value, it can actually cause an issue with the chat. And so we, you know, when we set this up, we you know, kind of, predetermine or set up those values to make sure that we don't, you know, we take any of the guesswork out of the process. And again, you know, we'll access those from questions that you're just creating as part of your chat process. And those attributes are created automatically within the memory process. And you'll, and you'll see how we can access those as we go forward. And then from there, through the chat process, let's say we're asking a, a number of different, let's say even multi-level questions. So like questions that build upon each other. And with that, we can then give predefined responses according to the attribute value. So we can actually set those preconditions on what message or or note that we want to display within the chat according to what they've already pre-selected. And it actually pulls in within that response, the attributes that were selected. So you don't have to actually type it in again. And, and you'll see that as we go about that process, it's actually pretty straightforward to use. And again, you know, this is one of those, uh, it, it's kind of a fun process because it's, it, it was, it's kind of a new concept for some. And, and you'll see how easy it is. So let me go ahead and end the slideshow and we're going to go right in. So first off, like I say, I always like to 
give a demonstration of what the end result is. And so we're actually going to go into a chat. I'm going to go ahead and put my first name. And by the way, when I put my first name in, that's like one of the first attributes that get created within the memory. So I can, you know, access that attribute. And when it, you know, when it gives our response here, it's actually using uh, that attribute that I already predefined. And, and again, throughout the system, you can do those kind of processes. And, and you know, I'll even show you how we access that as well as part of that process. And so one of the first things I actually set it up to where I, I want to seek program info. And specifically, it's going to ask me like what areas I'm interested in and what degree level. And when it does that, it'll then give me a predefined response uh, with those values embedded. Now, I kept this conversation fairly simple, keeping in mind that you can provide web links, let's say, to a program when they uh, select the, the correct values, and then you can actually give them a predefined program. So, like, let's say they're looking in business administration and you want a bachelor's degree, you can then automatically give them a link to your bachelor's degree business program. And the beautiful part about that, again, is it, it provides that interaction and makes your AI and your conversation, you know, more valid. So I can do this a number of ways. You know, I can also use the already predefined help or I can just ask a question. So I asked the question, and so now it's going in. This is actually the part where I've actually set up the questions and the attributes. So I'm going to ask about my business, and then it's going to bring me a follow-up question, and it's going to ask for my, my degree level that I'm seeking. And then according to those values that I selected, it's actually providing me the response back. Uh, pretty straightforward. It's, you know, these values right here. And so the all, all, all this right here is actually pulling information directly from the attributes. I didn't actually retype that in. Uh, that is a real time set of information that the system is pulling from the memory of the attributes. And so that's something key to remember. So. Now I'm going to show you how I accomplish that. And so first off, I have set up, you know, my chat. And as always, we can we go into our main starting point here. I click on manage and it brings me into my main chat flow. And as I discussed, I, I wanted to show you where, you know, one of the first attributes I get to use. So like right here, you'll see where I have inserted the first name as an attribute. And to access those attributes, you'll see here right on this button right here where it looks like a piece of paper, you know, with two columns. When I click on that, it actually brings up all the system level attributes that I have access to through the chat and that I can reuse. Any of these attributes that are within the system, I can actually reuse and, you know, use those responses that they have already given and reuse them again. So I don't have to like re-ask the question. Uh, if they've already asked the question, I can ask that, you know, access that information at any time again and you know bring it back out to them if they, you know, you know, they seek further information. So from here, we're actually going to go to the QA board. And I actually have queued up here uh, the program info question. So uh, I created a new QA for program info. And then again, I created a, a multi turn And to show you what that looks like, I'm going to click a new QA. And that multi turn looks like the sideways V with the dots on the end. When I click that, that actually brings me into the multi turn area. And then it'll actually look a lot like your main chat flow, how you use it. So I, I just wanted to make sure you knew what that, you know, button looks like to go into the multi-turn and access. Okay. After you've already created the multi-turn, it goes into the edit icon. So it looks like a pencil. Okay. 
from here, I actually created the question that I wanted to ask. Now, this question was a single select multi response. So, so basically, I created a list of responses that I gave them. So predefined list. So I take away any issues with them misspelling anything or, uh, you know, you know, typing in something, you know, an area that you don't currently offer. And it really allows for you to define or predict that information. So using these kind of list functions are really great. Uh, just to show you how, what that looks like. If I go back to my new question, I select multi-turn request. I click on the plus sign. It's gonna bring me a new panel here. And then I can, I'll click on request user input. And then I can select any of these values like a, uh, you know, a, this is that single answer multi-choice question. I can do a multi-answer multi-choice question so they can select more than one. I could do a free text question. Uh, which adds a little bit more excitement because you can't actually predict what a user may enter and whether they'll spell it correctly. So then you have to use some other tools. And then from there, a simple yes or no. You go back to the QA board and I'm going to go back into my program info. So from here, I went in and I created the question that I wanted to ask. And then keep in mind, I can go in and enter in as many lines as I want. All I have to do is click on the return uh, as I'm entering it. And when I click on the return, it creates another line. And then I can put whatever value I want in there. Uh, and so I actually have the ability to ask, uh, uh, put as many values in there as I want. And again, that allowed a lot of flexibility in the process. From there, once I have defined that, uh, keeping in mind, I, I personally like, you know, it'll actually give you a system defined uh, name of your attribute, but I actually like to go and rename my attribute. And you do that after you've created this question, for instance, I'll scroll down and you'll see here again where it says view pre-built attributes in the GG topic. And this is only going to display the attribute you just created as part of the question. And when I click on that, I have the ability then to go and change the name of that attribute instead of having it be a system name, because a lot of times I'll use a term that I'm familiar with and then I can remember every time I go to access it that that's the attribute that I want to use. And that's really important as far as keeping everything straight in the process. And, and it allows us to, you know, reuse that attribute and, you know, it, it's in using words that we're used to as part of that process. So it's using terminology that we use all the time. Once I have that created, you'll notice when I mouse over the panel, I can then add as many of these panels for response as I like. Okay, uh, I now remember I had a multi um, value response. So I asked a follow up question and you'll see here it's just like with the area question to where I again used a single select multi uh, value uh, set of answers. I can then select that. And again, I went and changed the name of my attribute to be degree because that's what it is. And, uh, you know, again, I'm using terminology that I'm used to using. Now, one of the first things I, I, I'm actually going to back up here a little bit, because one, if you recall in the PowerPoint, we talked about sending a precondition to make sure that it always has a value if you're going to use the attribute. And so you'll, you'll see here where you have this, this looks like little duck. And so this first little duck that you want to use where you're actually creating the conditions or the precondition of the attribute. I'll click on that. It'll then bring up what's called the precondition. I can then select the condition and you'll notice that I can then select attributes. And again, you'll note when I scroll down, you'll see all the different attributes that I can select. I can then select the attribute that I want to use. 
So like, for instance, if I wanted to use area, when I start typing that in, it'll then uh, allow me to, you know, bring it down into different values, okay? Again, uh, also under that same precondition, when I set that precondition, I can also say in that precondition, that I want it to be, I'm saying it can not have no value if I use that attribute. Okay, so just like in that PowerPoint, I could, when I do this, it actually makes it so that, you know, you're not, you can predict that when you, whenever you go to use that attribute, it's always going to have a value. If you try to use the attribute and it doesn't have a value within the chat, they'll actually give you a predefined message that, and ask them to make, to answer the question, which is nice. Okay, then from there, as I create these panels, for instance, I can then set the value. And so you'll notice that my message, and again, I am already reusing that attribute. So when I create the message, I basically can select a pre uh, 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 an attribute value. So, so for instance, if I want to use the first name of the person like like this, so I can say hi, and then I'm going to use the attribute of the name. So I, I can put in that name and I can use that within the value. But I'm not going to do that right now because I want to introduce something in correctly in my webinar. But anyway, you can actually reuse any attribute that has value in any of your messages throughout the process. Again, utilizing that. And, and so I can select that. And so when they make a select of, let's say, a degree or the area, uh, whatever they selected beforehand will actually display in the message. Then from there, again, I will select my ducks and I can then put in my pre-definitions. So when I, when I use this panel, I am saying that I want my area to equal computer science and I want my degree to equal bachelor. And when I have those two preconditions defined to display this information, and again, you can have a link, you can even embed a video, whatever you want as part of that process. And so it's all pretty straightforward in that aspect. So I'm just gonna pause right here and uh, see if there's any questions. Uh, feel free just to unmute yourself to see if there's any questions that you have. Steve? Yes, go ahead, Henry. Okay, I have a question. It's a little bit out of, but it could be a little bit out of context of this. Right now, you you collect the attribute by asking the question, and then they make a choice, and then you store the choice into an attribute. What if I want to set up so that I collected these attribute out of free text? Like, like let's say in here, I'd say something like, um, uh, how do I collect the area and degree if somebody say, I am interested in a program in business for a bachelor degree. Okay, now the, the issue with that is that if you're using free text for something like that, um, you're introducing some unknowns. Uh, mm -hmm. First off, they may spell something incorrectly they could change the order of the entry. And uh -huh. when you're using the preconditions, it's 
looking for something exact. And, and so in this case, the reason why I use the predefined responses is that I took that question out of that process. Uh -huh. And you'll see that it, it's in this case, it's looking for exactness. And so this is really a, a, a key takeaway. When you're using this attribute this way, as far as doing a, a comparison, if let's say somebody misspelled computer and they're trying to do a comparison and since it's looking for an exact match, it would not come back with a match and would never return the message that you want. Uh -huh. And that's why I predefine the list because it then takes away that unknown as part of that process. Now, in other parts of the system, when you're not using something, when you're using, when you're not using something like the equal, uh, there is some other areas that are kind of outside of this realm of what we're in that mm -hmm. allow you to say, you know, with 60%, uh, you know, correctness, if, if, if it's like this, we will display this. So let's say you can actually set the level of exactness, so to speak. Uh -huh. So you can give a percentage and say, hey, if, you know, if it mostly matches like 80%, then that's close enough for us and we can display this message because we're relatively sure that this is what they're asking, right? When you're doing that free uh -huh. test. But in this specific case where we are utilizing, you know, like these drop downs using a text value, then to compare brings in too many unknowns since we're asking for exactness in the process. Yeah, I understand. So, so if I have that other case, I don't know, and tell me if, 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 if this cover in another, uh, another tutorial. Um, because one of the things that I'm thinking of, and I'm thinking it off the top of my head here, is somebody would type some sort of utterance, which basically seems to match something, but not exact. So I want to use that as a trigger to come back and saying, okay, I, I don't get it 100%, but let me solicit that again on a sentence that I think I can exactly understand. And, and we actually did cover this on another webinar. It was, uh, it dealt with free text. Uh, and I can send you the link to that later if you'd like. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, so it, it actually a previous webinar that talked about, uh, I believe it was utilizing, and I think it was one that was put on by Wensi, uh, where he uh, talked about you know, gathering free text and then doing that, using that free text to compare and get values and utilize it other places. And so I will go back and find that link and I'll send that to you, Henry, okay? Thank you, Steve. Uh, any other questions on this specific topic? Again, pretty straightforward. Again, you're wanting to make sure that you're using the, the, the you know, almost exactly what I demonstrated when you're doing this process because Again, that exactness is really important. And, and, and again, it does allow for, you know, reuse of, you know, selections that have been previously done, uh, you know, especially with long conversation, if they've already pre-selected a specific degree and a program area, and then they ask later on what the tuition is, uh, the system then can, let's say, it'll automatically give you the tuition for that degree in that program area automatically. And I believe I have uh, already a definition defined in here. Let me go up here. And so this actual value is actually 
based upon my selections that I've already made. And I'll show you, because I actually set up a set of tuition responses already within the system. And so based upon my selection already, it will actually give us our values and not back. And so based that I already selected backwards, it gave me the response back for the $2,000 per semester. And so again, it's re it's using a, a question that's already been asked and answered on a completely separate question and it brought the value forward and so really that's more of where the power of this is is that you know when you have questions that are related to previous questions but they've already been asked let's say you know 10 questions up in the conversation it, it doesn't have to circle back and re-ask the question to the user. It'll automatically give them that question back already since they've already defined it. And again, that, that memory makes the conversation more fluid. Okay. Any questions? If no other question, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the, the recording. And then if there's if you have any questions outside of our topic, I will see 